Hi everybody. Okay, so we're going to do a little geometry today. And um, I'm going to focus on something that a lot of students forget. And this is something that you do see on the SAT and the ACT for those of you that are still in high school. You have um, special triangles, the 30-60-90 right triangle and the 45-45-90 right triangle. So <clears throat> when you have a right triangle, and they have to be, of course, right triangles, that's the 90 degree angle, and you know that one of the other angles is 30 degrees, you know that the sum of all the angles inside of a right triangle, or inside of any triangle, add up to 180 degrees. So if this is 90 degrees, 180 minus 90 is 90, and therefore these two have to add up to 90 degrees. So the moment you see a right triangle with a 30 degree angle, you know that automatically the other angle is 60 degrees, so that the sum of all the angles inside add up to 180, right? 30 plus 60 plus 90 is 180 degrees. Now, <clears throat> um, the lengths of the sides of a triangle correspond to the um, angles, and so the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side, and the middle angle is opposite the middle length. And of course, we all know that the hypotenuse is always the largest side in a right triangle because it's always opposite the largest angle. So if I let the smallest side, this is my smallest side, smallest, we'll call this the middle, right? And we know this is the hypotenuse, which is the largest. If I call the smallest side x, any number x, in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, if this length is x, then the hypotenuse is twice the smallest side, 2x in general. And the middle side, the middle length opposite the 60 degree angle is the smallest side times the square root of 3. This is the relationship between the lengths of the sides of a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So, for example, let's say that I give you a triangle, give you a right angle, and I say this is 30 degrees and this length is 2, okay? And I want to solve for the rest of the triangle, find all the rest of the lengths. Well, if this is a 36, uh, a 30 degree angle in a 90 degree a right triangle, then automatically this is a 60 degree angle. And I know the smallest side in this, in this triangle, don't I? I know the side that's opposite the 30 degree angle, which means that the middle length, opposite the 60 degree angle is the smallest side times the square root of 3 and the hypotenuse which is the longest side is the smallest side times 2 or double the smallest side and I solved for the triangle now you're not always given the smallest side sometimes you're given the larger side sometimes you're given the middle side so here I'm gonna leave this up here we're gonna use this we'll do one more Okay, I'm going to say now that this is 60 degrees. Again, the moment that I see a right triangle, and I know this angle is 60 degrees, automatically this must be 30 degrees so that the sum of the angles inside of the triangle add up to 180 degrees. This time I'm going to give you this, uh, this length, the hypotenuse, which is 6. And I want to solve for the rest of the triangle. Find the other two lengths. Now this time I know the largest side, correct? I know the hypotenuse is 6. Whenever you're trying to solve for a right triangle, um, if it is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, you're always looking to find the smallest side first. So in this case, I know that the side is opposite the 30 degree angle. This side is the smallest side. I know that the smallest side in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle right, is half of the hypotenuse. If the hypotenuse is twice this, then this is half of this. So if I take 6 and divide by 2, I get 3. The smallest side is 3. Right? Notice the hypotenuse is twice the smallest side. I know the smallest side is opposite the smallest angle. Then, therefore, once I know the smallest side, now I can find the middle side, which is going to be the smallest side times the square root of 3, which in this case, 3 times the square root of 3. And I solve for the rest of the sides in this triangle. One more. One more, and this time, let me just kind of like make a crooked triangle here. Let me do it another way. Here is a right triangle, and you know that this length is 30 degrees, and you're told that this side is 9. 
what do you know? Which length do you know? Do you know the smallest side? I do not, because the smallest side would be opposite the 30 degree angle. This is unknown. Do I know the hypotenuse? I do not. The hypotenuse is unknown. The hypotenuse is the longest side in the right triangle, opposite the 90 degrees. So which side do I know? If this would have to be 30, uh, 60 degrees, I know the middle length, don't I? I know this length, opposite the 60 degree angle. So this time, I'm given the middle length and I'm asked to solve for the rest of the triangle. Now I know this. Well, how do I go from here to here? Remember, I'm always looking to find the smallest side first. Well, if this middle length is the smallest side times the square root of 3 to get from here to here, I multiply by right the square root of 3. If I want to go in the opposite direction, I would divide by the square root of 3. So I want to go from the middle length to the smallest length. I'm going to divide by the square root of 3. And of course, I have to simplify. So 9 divided by the square root of 3. Now, remember that you guys have to always rationalize, which means that you cannot have a radical sign on the bottom of a fraction. So you have to clear that out. And the way to do that is to multiply the bottom by itself. And whatever I do to the top or to the bottom of a fraction, I have to do to the top. So I end up with 9 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is just 3. Simplify completely. 9 divided by 3 is 3 times the square root of 3. So this length is 3 times the square root of 3. Again, what did I do? I know the middle length, and to get to the smallest length, I have to divide by the square root of 3, and of course simplify because I can't have a radical sign on the bottom. But once I know the smallest side, now I can go and find the hypotenuse, which is twice this. 2 times 3 times the square root of 3. Twice this. 2 times 3 is 6, so this is 6 times the square root of 3, and this is my hypotenuse. So again, you can have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. You could be given any length. You could be given the smallest length. That's always the easiest case, because all you have to do to get to the hypotenuse is double that. All you have to do to get to the middle side is multiply it by the square root of 3. You could be given the hypotenuse first. All you have to do is divide that by 2 to get to the smallest side. And to get to the middle side, multiply by the square root of 3. Or you could be given the, large, uh, the middle side, and to get to the smallest side, we divide by the square root of 3. And then, of course, to get to the hypotenuse, we double that smallest side. Okay, so you can be given any length. All right, let me go into this next one, the 45-45 uh, 90 degree right triangle. Okay, um, a 45-45 90 degree right triangle is also called an isosceles right triangle. And what does isosceles mean? Isosceles means two equal sides, so equal, equal. So this would be a 45 degree angle, this would be a 45 degree angle, and the sum of all the angles inside of this right triangle add up to 180 degrees. Now of course, like I said before, the sides correspond to the angles, so the two equal sides would be opposite the equal angles. So let's do our general situation here. If this is x and this is x, because they would be the same length. If I know one of the legs of the right triangle, then automatically of the isosceles right triangle, then automatically the hypotenuse is one of these lengths times the square root of 2. So again, I can be given any scenario. I can be given the legs. I can be given the hypotenuse. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. So here is a right triangle, and I'm told that that is 45 degrees, which automatically allows me to say that this is 45 degrees, and therefore that these two lengths are equal. I'm given this length is equal to 4. Well, if these two lengths are equal, then automatically this length is also 4. How do I find the hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse is one of these lengths times the square root of 2. So what do I do? I take these lengths and multiply by the square root of 2. And now I have all of the lengths of the sides of this right triangle. Okay. Don't confuse the two triangles um, because I know that students do do that sometimes. When I'm dealing with the 45, 45, 90 right triangle, I always multiply by the square root of 2 to get to the hypotenuse. Okay, this one is very different. 
the hypotenuse is double the smallest side. Let's do another situation. Here is a triangle, and this is all that I'm told. And then I'm given that this is equal to 10, and I'm asked to solve for the rest of the triangle. Well, I know that it's a right triangle. I know that these are equal to each other, so therefore it's an isosceles right triangle, and therefore automatically this is 45 degrees, and this is 45 degrees, and therefore it's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, this situation. Which side do I know? I know the hypotenuse, right? I know the largest side, opposite the 90 degree angle. So I need to go in the opposite direction. I need to go from here to here, from here to here. So if I want to go from the hypotenuse to one of these lengths, if in this direction, if from the length to the hypotenuse, I multiply by the square root of 2, to go in the opposite direction, what am I going to do? I'm going to divide by the square root of 2. I know the hypotenuse. I need to take the hypotenuse and divide by the square root of 2 to go from the hypotenuse to one of these lengths. Now again, I have to rationalize, right? I can't leave a radical sign on the bottom of a fraction. So I have to multiply the bottom and the top by the square root of 2. On the top, I get 10 times the square root of 2. And on the bottom, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is equal to 2. Simplify, because the 10 and the 2 can be simplified, into 5 times the square root of 2. And therefore, this length is 5 times the square root of 2. But since this is an isosceles right triangle and both of these lengths are equal to each other, this is also 5 times the square root of 2. And I solve for this triangle. I can always check my work, right? If I take this length, 5 times the square root of 2, and I go in this direction to check and see if the hypotenuse is 10, I would multiply it by the square root of 2. 5 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is equal to 5 times 2 or 10, right? And therefore, I know that this length is correct, because if I multiply it by the square root of 2 to get to the hypotenuse, I get 10. So these are my two special triangles. They're very important. You see them again in trig um, with the unit circle. The unit circle is actually created from these. That's where it comes from. Um, I can do another video on that if you want to see where the unit circle comes from and why those angles correspond to those terminal points. Um, but anyway, let me know if you guys need more examples of this. Uh, otherwise, good luck. Bye! <laughs>